Hey guys, Vertus Education here with episode 9 of the Unreal Engine 4 Beginner Tutorial Series. And in today's episode, we're going to be showing you how to apply materials to the faces of our BSP that we created in the past few episodes. In addition to that, we're also going to be going over some of the different surface properties, allowing us to change the scaling of our materials, play around with the rotation, and also playing around with some alignment settings for changing it to default, planar, fit, and so on and so forth. Now, there is a lot of different uh, surface properties, but I am just going to be going over the most important ones. So, uh, applying a material. So, really, as of right now, our materials are pretty basic. For the most part, what you guys should have is just this really lame checkerboard material. And, you know, it doesn't look very uh, visually appealing. What we need to do is really bring on some kind of real material onto, the, onto our BSB brushes. For example, some of us, you know, we was making some basic houses. Like I made, like uh, I made this in the in one. I think it was the third episode, and I then went on to make something like this. Now, when we actually apply these materials to the BSP, you know, you can do it on anything. You don't have to have my super fancy house that I have here. So to do that with our content browser, first and foremost, we need to find a material. Now, keep in mind, I will be showing you how to make materials later in the series. But for now, we're just going to be showing you how to make the preset ones that came with the engine. So when you find a material that you like and want on one of your BSP faces, just go ahead and find it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and find and going to go ahead and use this rock marble polished material. It looks very nice. I've tried it on the house already just keep in mind you can you know change the material really easily once you found a face you want to apply it onto just it's very basic just click drag and release and it will be applied onto the BSP face now if you do have relatively complex uh, faces you know uh, complex geometry it's only going to apply it to the one face that you drag and drop it onto so having said that you're most likely going to have to drag it onto each of the different little faces that you have here just like that now let's just go ahead and show you that you know you can have different materials on different areas for example if I wanted to I could go ahead and have this sandstone material up on the ceiling part here and you know we can select each of these little faces and we can drag it on just like that it's very simple now I've already done the inside of the house I've put some flooring in here you know each of these different faces they have different materials now uh, let's just go ahead and show you some of the different surface properties that we have here. Now, for the most part, it won't look all seamless and sexy for you just like this, so you may have to play around with some of the properties. So, let's just go ahead and select a face. And from here, we have a few main properties we can play around with. First and foremost, we have the scale, which allows you to change the size of the material on that face. We, secondly, we have rotation, which allows us to rotate your faces and lastly we have the uh, alignment types so let's just go ahead and start off with scale scaling is pretty simple I'm gonna go ahead and set this to 2 press apply here and you can see that it has got a little bit uh, a little bit long uh, a little bit bigger so if I set that to 5 press apply you're gonna see it's got really bigger and you can do this uh, just to pretty much change the size of your material to make things fit now for example if you see here I've got some large flooring then I've got some small flooring and that's because it's two different faces so you gotta make sure you make that change to each of the different faces and you can just go ahead and do that just press apply just a couple of times just keep doing it very very simple now, if we wanted to, if we didn't want the material facing this way, we could always rotate it, rotate it. For example, if I wanted to, I could just press 45 there and it'll rotate it by 45 degrees. If I wanted to, I could also rotate it by 90 degrees. If you know it's 90 degrees you want to rotate it by, then by all means just go ahead and use that. Or if you want to, you can even type in a custom value in here. So I set this to 44, press enter, 
and boom it's now rotated it by 44 now I'm just gonna go ahead and control Z a few times to get back to the original rotation which was pretty much perfect now we can also flip the U and flip the V this essentially just completely flips it if I flip it twice it goes back to the original so we have two different axes we've got the U and the V and you know you can see that U is going to be, uh, well, whatever it is, one of them is going to be length and one of them is going to be width, basically. If I flip this one here, you can see that it's actually being rotated upwards, I believe. When I press V, you can see it's being done, it's being done lengthwise. Pretty simple, really. So just play around with that. Now, the last thing that we have here is alignment. Uh, alignment just allows us to change the alignment of the materials. For most of you, you probably won't have your materials that line up perfectly just like this. Now, if you have a seamless texture, it still won't do. What you'll need to do is play around with some of these. For example, alignment surface default, that's just going to be, well, default, you know, it's not going to be perfect, but uh, it's just going to dump it straight on there. Now, if you do want to get it exactly perfect, uh, if I just go ahead and set this to 5 and 5, you can see it's not going to line up, so I can just quickly play around with these. If I set the alignment to default, it's going to be default like this. If I set it to planar, most of the time it's going to carry on exactly where it left off. As you can see here, it's completely seamless there. And that will also go around edges as well. So, for example, if I was to just quickly go into unlit mode, and if I was to quickly apply uh, the material around here to get something that can that you can see is seamless, uh, maybe not that. Let's, let's go ahead and use this instead then. And this, if I go ahead and you know make this all planar now, you're going to see it's going to be perfectly seamless on all of the faces. Let's do it a couple of times, and boom, you can see it's perfectly seamless, regardless of the edges, and it looks absolutely great there. So that's what planar is. We've also got fit, which essentially just uh, stretches the material to fit the uh, the shape of your geometry or whatever you're applying it to. In this case, when you've got large objects, I do not advise you use uh, setting it to fit as it's going to stretch a crazy, crazy amount unless you have a super high resolution uh, material. I'll talk about uh, material resolutions uh, later on. But for now, I don't really advise that you do use the fit unless it's just a relatively small uh, object. It's pretty much all of the alignment types that I, I want to go through. So, you know, play around with those alignment types, play around with rotation, scaling, and there's also one last setting I think I wanted to go over. Um, so the last one is the light map resolution. That's just essentially the resolution of the light map. The higher the light map resolution, the better the lighting quality is going to be, and the lower it is, the lower the quality is going to be. Um, I don't have any examples of a light map, I don't think. Uh, usually they do keep some in here, but uh, I can't find any at the moment. Uh, let's see what I can find. No, nope, there's no light maps in there. But anyway, a light map just defines where the light is going to be on your object. You don't necessarily need to know too much about that for now, but light map resolution just essentially allows you to set the resolution. Simple as that. Anyway, so play around with all those settings. It's pretty much everything for surface properties. Go ahead and apply materials to a bunch of your BSP faces, and we'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.